G'day, it's Dan Beeston here for MacTuts Plus, and today we're going to learn how to do search and replace using regular expressions. Now most everyone knows how to do a simple search and replace on text. Here we have a missive from the Department of Government Affairs. You can see that we've abbreviated department here, but we want to change that throughout the entire document. So that's as simple as finding and replacing the abbreviation with the entire word. Do a search and replace, and every instance of that abbreviation gets changed. But in this case, all of the government departments are being renamed throughout the entire structure. The Department of Government is being turned into the Government Department. The Department of Defense is being turned into the Defense Department. It wastes a lot of time, but at least it keeps the business card printers in the money. Now we can't do a simple search and replace here, so we're going to have to use regular expressions. Now I'm using Sublime Text 2 to do my search and replace here. Here we can see the regular expression button. A number of text editors provide this facility. But while we're learning, I'd like to use a program that makes it a little bit easier to see exactly what's going on. So we're going to cut that text and we're going to download a program called RegExa. You can download RegExa from gskinner.com slash regexa slash desktop. You can use the web version if you like. I prefer the desktop version. Here's the desktop version. We're going to paste our information in there. And now we can play with it to our heart's content. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to find every instance of that department of, and then we want to find the word that follows it, and then we want to take that word and add the word department after it. Here, I'll show you. Here we have the phrase, the Department of Defense. It's made up of basic text, our dynamic word, and the end of that word. What we want to do is remove Department of, keep our dynamic word, and then add Department at the end of it. So if we open up RegExa, we can type in Department of space, and you can see that it's detected department of in every instance. Then what we want to do is we want to grab an alphanumeric character. We do that by hitting backslash w for word, a word character. And here you'll see that it's detected the first alphanumeric character after department of. Now what we want to do is we want to get as many alphanumeric characters until they run out. So we add a plus sign. Here you'll see it's detected the entirety of the word following department of. Now this word is the thing that we want to keep. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap that in a token. That token is assigned to the value dollar sign one. So if we wrap that in a token and then we replace it with dollar sign one, we can see that every instance of department of has been replaced. So you can see that department of government has been replaced with simply government. The department of defense has been replaced with defense. The department of agriculture has been replaced with agriculture. So we can just put department after it. And there you go. Department of Government has been replaced with Government Department. The Department of Defense with Defense Department. That works great, except here we see the Department of Agriculture and Farming and the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries have both been muddled up. So it's now the Agriculture Department and Farming. And that doesn't make any sense. Now, how do we select the and farming in this method? Well, we could put space, ampersand, space, Farming. That selects all of farming there, but not fisheries. So of course we change that to a word, backslash w plus, and that selects the word. So now it's selecting agriculture and farming and wildlife and fisheries, but it's no longer selecting one word. Wouldn't it be great if we could allocate everything after the first word to be optional? Well, we can. Here we see the phrase, the Department of Agriculture and Farming. 
That simple text. That is our first dynamic word. And that is the text that comes afterwards. What we're going to do is we're going to wrap that element inside a token, but we're going to add a question mark that makes it an optional token. Then we're going to wrap the whole thing inside another token. This is our optional token. We put a question mark after it. Then we wrap both words and the ampersand inside a token. Now you can see that Department of Government doesn't have an ampersand and it's replaced with Government Department. The Department of Defence is replaced with Defence Department. The Department of Agriculture and Farming optionally has an ampersand and a second word and so the entire thing goes into the token and is replaced with Agriculture and Farming Department. Our regular expression here looks like complete gibberish, but we know it's simply a breakdown of normal text, a dynamic word inside a token, plus an optional element of normal text and a second dynamic word. Let's grab that regular expression, take it to Sublime Text 2, paste it in, add our token, dollar one plus department and replace all and there you go welcome to the government department defense department even the agriculture and farming department let's move on here we have some text from an open source book by eric raymond the way that the book was originally formatted makes every double quote a succession of two apostrophe characters. But I don't want to print it like that. What I want to do is I want to replace all of those pairs of apostrophes with a double quote mark. And that's easy to do. Simply find and replace two apostrophes with double quotes. Replace all and there you go. But they're simple generic quotation marks. Wouldn't it be great to change the opening quotation mark to the special character left quotation mark and the right one to right quotation mark? Doesn't that look much nicer? But I don't want to go through and change every single one by hand. And I don't have to because I've got regular expressions at my fingertips. OK, we're back with our double apostrophe marks. Let's take all this text and move it into regexa. OK, let's have a think about exactly what we're looking for. We want to find two apostrophes, the text in the centre that we want to put inside a token, and the final set of apostrophes. Well. That shouldn't be too hard. Let's go to regexa. We're going to put two apostrophes and then inside a token, we're going to look for a word. As many parts as, oh, but what we've discovered is we're only selecting a word up until a space. And we want to select all the way to the double quotes at the end. So we're looking for either a word or a space. Well, we want to define a character set. So we'll make square brackets on either side of our word character. And we want to say either get a word character or get a space. And then it'll select two apostrophes and then either a word character or a space, as many as possible of them. Then two more apostrophes at the end and we've selected our quotation. But the problem is that down here, we've got a quotation that has a question mark in it. So we can add a question mark and that selects that one. And now we see down here at the open source movement, there is a hyphen. So we need to add a hyphen as well. And we just can't go through and check everything in the document. We need a better plan to figure out how we're going to define our quote. So let's get rid of everything in our token and we're going to replace all of that with a simple full stop. 
which means any character at all. Then hit plus, as many as possible. Then outside of the token, grabbing our double apostrophes. Now the issue here is that we've found a double apostrophe and then we've found any characters up into the double apostrophes. But it's found those double apostrophes and it's kept going and then found a second set of apostrophes and kept going and found the final set of apostrophes. If we put any info here at the end, it wouldn't select it. It's making the biggest selection it can between the front apostrophes and the end apostrophes. It's being greedy. Now we don't want it to be greedy, we're going to force it to be lazy. So we're going to put a question mark there so that it will look for apostrophes. It'll eat as much as it can, but then as soon as it possibly can, it's going to stop at those apostrophes. Hey, that's looking pretty good, isn't it? It selected the first quote. It selected the second quote. It selected the third quote here. But down at the fourth quote, it's gotten confused. It seems that the original document has open quotes for these are the people, but it hasn't closed those quotes. It's a mistake and we can't rely on our text to be mistake free. Now the problem here is that if I put more quotes in, we can see that our open quotes and our closed quotes are going to be back to front. We need to understand that sometimes our text is going to have mistakes. We need to have a think about what patterns exist within our quotations that we can always rely on happening. Well, let's have a look at our quotations. Each one starts with a space before the quotation marks. So, if we put in a space character and then two apostrophes, we can see that it's only selected the opening quotes of each element. Except for that very first one, which doesn't have a space. It has the beginning of a line. So let's replace that space with backslash s, which means space, but it also includes any white space character, which includes tabs or line breaks. Then we open up our token. We go for any character, as many as possible, make it lazy, and then put our final apostrophes on there. This allows us to select our quotes and then replace it with our left quotation mark, our token, and our right quotation mark. So that's working great. It's selecting all of the quotes that we want, but down here it's stripping out that space that we want before the quotation mark. Now we could replace that with a space that opens up every instance here. So we're taking away the space here and replacing it here, but then it replaces the space at beginning of lines as well. What we really want to do is select that first set of double apostrophes, but only if it's got a space in front of it. But we don't really want to take that space as well. What we can do there is use a look behind. Now a look behind is a special token. It's not set to string one or string two. What it asks is, hey, is question mark, left arrow before this element is there a space? So let's put that into regexer. We'll put special token around there and we'll say is left arrow there a space before these double quotes. It only finds double apostrophes if there is a white space character preceding them, but it doesn't actually select them. So we can get rid of that space there. And now all of our quotations are correct. Remembering, of course, that we have that mistaken dropped double quotes here in the text. But we can deal with that in a moment. Let's take that regular expression, do our search and replace using regular expressions. It's found them all then it's replacing them with left double quotes, the token, and right double quotes. Let's replace all. And now what we can do is we can do a find. 
and we can find any leftover double quotes. Here we find leftover double quotes at the end of hackers. And we can see that we've got a right quote at the beginning, which is not what we want. So let's move that to where it's supposed to be. And let's fix that by hand, which we would have had to do anyway because it was our mistake initially. Apparently the formatting of this document didn't allow for ellipses. So the writer just typed in three periods. And in fact, down here, they've put in four periods. What we want to do is replace those with the ellipsis character. Now we can do a search and replace on three dots, but we'd miss any instance where there's been a mistake made. Four dots or two dots, we want it to be consistent throughout the document. So, we're going to go back into regexer. We're going to do a search for periods. Now, simple periods aren't going to work because we already know that that is a regular expression term meaning any character. So, we put backslash period and it selects all the periods in our document. But what we want to do is select every instance where there are three periods. Now that's a bit verbose and it's only selecting sets of three periods and not four periods. What we'll do is we'll set some curly braces and we'll say we want to find sets of three periods. Now wherever there are three dots, it will find them. And now what we can do is we can replace them with an ellipsis. So it's replacing it here and down here, but it's leaving that extra period on the end. So we want to take care of this and say, if it's between two dots and four dots, we know that that's probably going to be an ellipsis and it's going to replace those with an ellipsis. But the problem is if we keep typing dots, it finds groups of four as the maximum and it replaces all of them with ellipses. What we want to do is replace all of those dots with a single ellipsis character. So we'll leave the last one off, which means two dots until as many as possible. So it's found all of those dots and replaced it with one ellipsis. So let's take that regular expression into sublime text, do a search and replace, replace it with our ellipsis, and replace all. Ah, doesn't that look much better? That's going to print beautifully. Okay, so that's doing search and replace in text, but what if I wanted to do a search and replace in a list of files? Here we have Forklift. This is a great FTP program, but it also allows for a number of really interesting file manipulation tools. Now here we have a directory where I've put some photographs. These are some photos that I took at Fiji, but you can see that I took them on different cameras. They have different numbering conventions and different naming conventions. You can see that I've also taken out some images that I didn't like and left only the ones that I do. What I want to do is that I want to rename them so that they're all the same set them up so that they're numbered correctly, and I want to order them by the date that they were created. Now, first things first. If you rename files, you can't undo them. So let's make a backup. There's our backup, nice and safe. Now we're welcome to mess up our file names. If we want, we can always go back to a backup. So let's open that up. We're in our Fiji Pix directory. First thing we want to do is we want to order them by the date that they were created. Currently, we can order them by name, their size, or when they were modified. Let's go to our view, show our view options, and add date created. Now we can click on that and order it by the date that it was created. Now let's select them all and hit enter and add a sequence to them. We can see that it's applying it to the name and it's adding a sequential number. So you can see it says one, two, three, four, but it's saying it after the rest of the name. 
So let's put a prefix on there and write num. And we can see in the live view that it separates those numbers from our new sequence. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 14. We're also going to put a bit of padding on the number. Three digits, so it goes 0, 0, 1, up to 0, 14. That's going to be helpful soon. So we're going to rename them all. Select them all again. And now we're going to use our regular expression. We're applying it just to the name, not to the extension. So let's have a look at our file names. Each one has a string of alphanumeric characters, then an underscore, then some digits, then the characters NUM, then our numbers that we want to keep and put inside a token. So let's open this in regexer and have a closer look at it. What we're looking for in our list is some alphanumeric characters, slash w for word, then multiple of them, then an underscore. We've selected the first bit. Then we're looking for digits, either a set of three digits or a set of four digits. So let's put slash d for digit, and then in brackets, three digits or four digits. And then put num, and then inside a token, as many digits as we can. And then we're going to replace it with Fiji trip underscore and then the token. Then you can see Fiji trip underscore and then the token. So let's copy that regular expression, open that in forklift, and under replace regular expression, put our regular expression in and replace it with Fiji trip underscore token. And here you see all those files, they're in their created order, and they're numbered 1 to 14 using the same file name. And because that's in a token, we can move that to the beginning of the file name, or even in the center of the file name. You can see just how powerful these tools can be. You can really move elements of text around like magic. Let's change that back and rename our files. And there you go, Fiji trip from 1 to 14. Now hopefully this has given you an idea for what situations regular expressions can be used for. There are a whole bunch of other regular expressions that we haven't even touched on. If you're interested, if your curiosity has been piqued, I highly recommend the NetTuts Introducing Regular Expressions Up and Running by Jeffrey Way. This course is fantastic and well worth signing up to Tuts Plus. I've seen great programmers turn and run in the face of regular expressions. They look like gibberish when you first see them, but now we've seen exactly how they break apart into their components and how easy it is to understand them once you know what you're looking for. As always, if you have any questions, please do ask them in the comments. This is Dan Beeston for MacTuts Plus.